In this video, we're going to do a worked example to try and work out how much heat leaks through a window on a cold Canberra night. This is an example of putting together several different forms of heat transfer to work out the net effect of several different things. So let's imagine we have a window, total cross-sectional area of one square meter, let's say, and let's say it's five millimeters thick, and the temperature on the inside of the window is 20 degrees centigrade and the outside 0 degrees centigrade, and we'll assume it's a bit windy outside. Now this is going to be an equilibrium situation. When you first get home and turn on the heating in your house, uh, hot air will come around on the inside and then a pulse of heat will move through the, the glass, slowly warming it up. But because the glass is pretty thin, that will all happen rather quickly, and before long we'll end up in steady state. And that's the situation we're going to solve here. We'll assume it's in steady state, which it probably will be after the first few minutes. And that means that the heat flow is the same at all points. Now what forms of heat flow are we going to have? Well, because glass is transparent, radiation can get through. So we're going to get radiation from the inside going outside and radiation from the outside going inside. Then in addition, you've got the hot air inside and then you're going to get convection. What's going to happen is there'll be a th thin cold layer which will be falling and more hot air will be coming in. Then there'll be conduction through the glass and then on the outside the glass will warm up the air near it which will be blown away and more cold air will come in. This time it's forced convection because it's windy. So we've got free convection here conduction here and forced convection here and of course the radiation. What are the temperatures going to look like? We'll plot a graph of temperature against position. So there's the inside of the glass and there's the outside. Now a long way inside it's going to be about 20 degrees. When it gets close to the glass it'll drop a bit because there'll be the cold convection current. Then there'll be a gradient across the glass this is the conduction, and then once again there'll be a warm layer just inside, and then it will cool down outside. Let's number these things. We'll call this T in, which is 20, T out, which is 0, and then let's call that, I don't know, T1 and T2, let's say. Okay, so that's our model. Very important to do that first uh, before plugging in equations. Now let's calculate the radiation first, because that's kind of independent of everything else. Now, the radiation outwards is going to depend on the temperature on the inside, and the radiation inwards is going to depend on the temperature on the outside. So the heat flux is going to be A times Stefan Boltzmann constant sigma, 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8. That's going to be T in to the fourth minus t out to the fourth. And these have to be in Kelvin for this equation. So if it's say 0 centigrade is 273 and that'll be 293. And if you plug the numbers in, area of 1, Stefan's constant 293 to the 4 minus 273, that comes out as a 102 watts for a 1 square meter window. Okay, so that's the radiation loss. That's the easy bit. Now let's look at the loss via convection and conduction. This is a bit more complicated. The amount of heat being convected, conducted across here depends on T1 minus T2. We don't know what those are. Likewise, the amount of heat being convected here depends on Ti minus T1, and the amount out there depends on T2 minus T0. So we're going to have to figure out what these two temperatures are to work out the heat flow. Now in any equilibrium situation, the way you work it out is you write down equations for every stage, an equation for this stage, an equation for that stage, an equation for that stage, and set them equal to each other.
because it's in equilibrium, we're assuming the heat flows all the way through, it's not building up in the middle somewhere. OK, so let's start off on the inside. This is the free convection. So we'll use Newton's cooling law, which says that the heat flow rate is equal to H delta T. Now H for air and free convection is about 5. Now remember this equation is pretty flaky, it's only very approximate and depends on geometry and many other things, but it's probably the best we can do. So the heat flow from here to here is going to be about 5 times Ti minus T1. Now we can look at the heat flow through the glass. In this case it's conduction. So the equation for that is K a delta T over X. Now K is about 1 for glass. Uh, X is 5 millimeters, so 0 0.005. So that's going to come out as about 1 over 0 0.005 T1 minus T2, which is 200. T1 minus T2. And then finally, we're going to get the force convection, force because it's wind, out from the outside of the glass. So force convection, we use the same equation as here, but now H is about 30, so it's going to be about 30 T2 minus T0. And those must all be equal to each other because we're assuming steady flow, the heat's not building up anywhere. If it was building up somewhere, the temperature profile would change until it comes into steady state. So after a minute or two, it probably will be in steady state. OK. So we have two unknowns, T1 and T2, and we have two equations. This one equals that, and that one equals this. So we can solve this. So let's set these two equations equal. That gives us that 200 T1 minus T2 equals 30 T2 minus T0. Now we know what T0 is, which is 0. Um, it doesn't matter whether we use Celsius or um, Kelvin here, as long as we're consistent, unlike the radiation equation where it does matter. But this one it only depends on the temperature difference, and the temperature difference is the same in Celsius as in Kelvin. So that equals 30 T2. So rearranging, we find that 200 T1 equals 230 T2. So T1 equals 23 over 20 T2. Now let's set this equation to that one. We get that 5 times Ti, which is 20, minus T1 equals 200 T1 minus T2. Uh, simplifying a bit, that ends up as 100 equals 205T1 minus 200T2. Now we can substitute this one in here. We find that 100 205 times 23 over 20 minus 200 T2 equals 35.75 T2, which solving we get that T2 equals 2.797 C. And then using this equation, that tells us that T1 equals 
3.22c, which is interesting. What that's telling us is that the glass is pretty cold. It's like 2.7 degrees here and 3 degrees there. So most of the temperature difference occurs from the air to the inside of the glass. The temperature difference across the glass and outside is relatively small. Which kind of makes sense if we go back to the physics. You see there's a 200 in front here and a 30 in front there, which means that the heat transfer through the glass is much more efficient it's the most efficient, so you'd expect a very small temperature difference across the glass, because even a small one will give you a big heat flux on the outside, because it's forced convection, it's much more efficient heat transfer than the inside. So generally, wherever the heat transfer is least efficient, you expect the most temperature difference to drive it, which is what we've got. OK, so if we plug these back in, we find out that the uh, we can plug any of these values back into the equations above, and we find the total heat flow due to this combination of convection and conduction is about 84 watts. So in this case we're losing about 100 watts through radiation and about 84 due to uh, conduction and convection through it. So actually making the glass thicker is not going to do that much good uh, if the radiation still dominates. All up it may be about 200 watts in all leaking through one square meters, which is quite a lot. This is why single glazed windows without curtains are not a very good idea.